watching BBC Two. Now, the long arm of the law catches up with Alex Cox, who presents his case from the movie room. Tonight on Movie Drome, a long arm of the law double bill. Two films about hard-boiled cops escorting crooks who mustn't be allowed to get away. Coogan's Bluff and The Narrow Margin. Coogan's Bluff is the prototypical Dirty Harry movie, made three years earlier than Dirty Harry by the same director, Don Siegel, the same musical composer, Lalo Schifrin, and of course the same actor, Clint Eastwood. That's a prisoner out there, not an animal to be tethered to a rail. Look, my shirt's in there on the bed. So what? There's a badge on it, it comes right off. You want to play it lonesome, boy? Fine. You'll get a gutful. Every lousy one-man job that comes along. Got one waiting for you right now. That's so. Tonight, Eastwood plays a deputy sheriff from Arizona who is sent to New York to escort a psychopathic killer back to his home state. Much amusement is occasioned by New York-Arizona dissimilarities and the way everyone Eastwood meets assumes he is from Texas. Any Arizonan would be and is horrified at the thought of being mistaken for a Texan. Texans are of a large and somewhat noisy disposition. Arizonans are a great deal quieter and formal as opposed to rude. You from Texas? Arizona. Everybody wear them clothes in Arizona? No, lifeguards wear swim trunks. Nurses wear white dresses. What do they wear here? Both states were once part of the Spanish empire known as Mexico. Texas broke away from Mexico in 1836 and was a separate nation for several years, becoming part of the United States in 1845. Arizona, north of the Gila River, became part of the United States during the Mexican War of 1848. The southern part was bought by the US under the Gadsden Purchase of 1854. Texas is the home of the great Texan oil barons, the Hunts and the Murkisons. Arizona is the home of the great saguaro cactus, found only in the south of that state and in northern Sonora, Mexico. Arizona being clearly better than Texas, it's good to see Eastwood sticking up for the land of the saguaro. It is his geographic basis that makes Eastwood so appealing in Coogan's Bluff. When he's more urban, as he is in the San Francisco-based Dirty Harry series, he's less charming, more a maniacal gun freak. Look, friends, uh, we want to be alone. Uh-uh. Go away, Charlie. Yeah, while your legs still work. <laughs> All right, now. Now, I don't like violence, Mr. Wonderful, whatever your name is. You better drop that blade, or you won't believe what happens next, even while it's happening. Inevitably, in Coogan's bluff, Clint gets beaten up. This appears to have been in his contract since he made a fistful of dollars, where everything that happened to him was borrowed from Kurosawa's Yojimbo. Toshiro Mifune played the samurai in Kurosawa's film. He went on to play more samurai, but also businessmen and gangsters, and an assortment of tough guys. Clint's range has been less extensive, although he did essay the role of film director John Huston in his white hunter, Black Heart. In tonight's film, he goes through more or less the same motions Richard Widmark did in Madigan, on Siegel's previous film. You have to hand it to Siegel, turning out three films in quick succession, all of which have the same plot, but different central characters and titles. That's recycling. This isn't the OK Corral around here. This is the city of New York. We've got a system. Not much, but we're fond of it. We don't like it when some two-for-a-nickel cowboy thinks he can bend it out of shape. Are you charging me or what? Tonight's bad guy is played by Don Stroud. He's almost as bad as Andy Robinson in Dirty Harry. Also noteworthy in the cast are Lee J. Cobb and Seymour Casal. The script is not without its 60s infelicities, as when the embittered Eastwood tells his New York girlfriend, 
the color of pity is red.